Welcome to Chicago Independent Television, a collection of progressive video reports by grassroots media workers from Chicago and beyond, produced free from corporate or commercial support or influence. I'm Michelle Harris. In this special presentation, we'll feature a film by Russell Michaels, Simon Ardizon, and Robert Cohen. The film follows a young team on their nationwide investigation of the current problems with our voting systems and reveals the shocking story of how touchscreen voting is highly susceptible to hacking. We now present Hacked. We're here today because our democracy is under attack. The literal counting of the vote is now owned by a private corporation. Your ballot has been cast. You know something's broken in the promised land. We were extremely pleased with the, the way our equipment functioned during the recall election. It would be the first machine in the history of man that was fail-safe. The results will be accurate and reliable. How much more damage? We have a company that lies. Yes, I'll say it, lies. You could connect to that machine, get complete control over it, change votes, um, change the software. This stuff was never corrected. What in effect you did is create a big complex building, put locks on every door, use the same key for every lock, and then published a picture of the, uh, of the key on the wall. Does this seem to be a suitable security architecture to you? A busted deal here in the promised land. At the time of the most important election in our country's history, we have the greatest doubts as to whether thousands of voters are going to once again be disenfranchised. Only this time, there will be no evidence. For the first time, many Americans will be voting on paperless electronic voting machines, which are being rolled out across the nation. To begin voting, press 6. Election officials are trying to persuade the public to trust this new technology. How do I know that my vote's been counted? The memory should have taken it. But how do I know that it has? How do I know the system didn't crap out? Nobody knows. I don't know the system. Would you like your life to depend on the accuracy of this machine? Uh, this is the first time we're going to use it, so I... Let me ask you a question. <laughs> Would you like your life to depend on the accuracy of this machine? No. Okay. Bev Harris, a grandmother from Seattle, was curious about the machines and the corporations that make them. I had some questions about these voting machines, and I started looking on Google. And I wanted to find out how the voting machines worked. What happened? next really changed my life. One reason I was so curious is because it's a secret how they work. The companies that make them keep it a secret, none of the computer scientists felt they could even look at the code because the code was supposed to be a secret. The certification labs that examine it keep their process a secret of what they do, and even the election officials who buy the equipment are prohibited by their contract from ever looking and seeing how it works. Bev did a simple search on the internet for Diebold Election Systems, one of the three major manufacturers of voting machines. 
I stumbled upon an obscure web page which contained the crown jewels for Diebold election systems. It contained 40,000 files, all of their programs, that had been sitting there and accumulating for six years. What Bev found on Diebold's unsecured site was the secret software that counted the votes in 37 states. Over 70% of Americans will be voting electronically in the November presidential election, and Diebold, based in Ohio, is the market leader. The FTP site was an unfortunate situation, I admit to that. It was a situation where that information was out there, it was captured, which was our fault. We made a mistake, and we readily admit that. Will it happen again? No, it will not. After finding the files, you know, I sort of collected together some various computer scientists. And uh, Dr. Dill, I believe, Dr. David Dill from Stanford, passed the files to Dr. Avi Rubin, who was from uh, a security institute at Johns Hopkins University. The problem that Bev has discovered is, is a pretty significant security hole. And it does open the way for people uh, to really seriously manipulate the election in a way that's very difficult to detect. He examined it and wrote a paper, and by July 24th, it was in the New York Times under the headline, Stunning, Stunning Security Flaws Found in Diebold Election Systems. No one had ever had a chance to analyze the code in these machines. The companies that make them keep it proprietary and claim that it's a trade secret. And so we had a chance to see what's really going on inside of these machines. I teach a lot of graduate level computer security courses at the Florida Institute of Technology. And if someone submitted the Diebold Jam server version that Bev showed to me as a final project, they would fail. The architecture is just that concerning. What grade would you give them? F. Dr. Thompson looked at the central tabulator for Diebold, which is something that not many people had looked at up until now. It's called the GEMS system, G-E-M-S. And the central tabulator is one of the most vulnerable systems and one of the most tempting targets because it controls the most votes at once. Central tabulators for Diebold are active in a thousand counties. Each county has one or sometimes two and they count up to two million votes at a time. Sequoia, ESNS, and Diebold uh, have the lion's share of the market. In fact, ESNS and Diebold alone have about 80 percent of the electronic voting market and the two senior executives at those two companies are actually brothers. So it could be argued that the, there's somewhat of a cozy relationship there. They keep saying their machines are flawless, there's never been a problem, even though we can by now bring forward solid evidence of hundreds of elections that have been miscounted and that have indeed been flawed. You're watching Chicago Independent Television. Ever wonder why Bush makes certain decisions? Decisions that foul our air and water chew up our wilderness and keep us suckling on foreign oil? Why would he continue to fatten up the wealthy while starving the programs for veterans, seniors, and school children? Or why would he wage a war in Iraq and then give big fat contracts to cronies? Ever wonder if it's really Bush who makes these decisions? Well, we don't mean to insult the pigs, but you get the idea. Welcome back to Chicago Independent Television. We now continue with Hacked, a film investigating the problems with electronic voting. Andy Stevenson was running for Secretary of State in Seattle when he read Bev's revelations on her website, blackboxvoting.org. But when I first saw the GEMS hack, I was still actually running for office. And my reaction was, is, <laughs> bleep, <laughs> I'm screwed. <laughs> so. I sent Bev an email offering her to help her in any way that I could. I asked him to call and find out if Bob Urosevich was still the president of Diebold because there was some question about it at that time. They were keeping him kind of under wraps. So I called his house and his wife answered and apparently was on a plane and she said he'd, he'd call me back after I said, well, I heard that he's not president anymore of Diebold. And I almost immediately got a call back from Bob Urosevich threatening him and saying, you better back off or you're going to get a visit. I said, from who, Bob? <laughs> the Easter Bunny or Santa Claus? And he says, I'm serious. And I said, so am I. I'm from Texas. I'm not afraid of you. And so I called Andy up about 1030 at night and said, you want to take off tomorrow early? And uh, let's go make some visits. So Andy and I took off for a nine state tour to find out what's really going on.
Bev and Andy discovered that many states, including Washington, were using illegal software that hadn't been tested to check if it counted votes accurately. You know, it's darn hard to get answers about our own voting system. Andy and I approached Mr. Evan, who's the Assistant Washington State Attorney General, and asked him questions about what we do if the Secretary of State certifies software illegally. And he said, well, I defend the Secretary of State, so you can't report it to us. I don't know if there's anything I can do here. I'd encourage you to take this up with the Secretary of State's office. They're the Secretary of State's, State's office, office has involved. lied to us. They've lied to us. Yeah. They're the appropriate authority. Is it a criminal matter if you have a Secretary of State's office who is presiding over the use of software in elections machines that has, is, and the software itself is in violation of our own state law? Not to my knowledge. Um, what redress do the citizens have? Voting. But if the voting machines are rigged, how do we, how do we change that? Yeah, that's an issue you have to take up with the Secretary of State. There isn't anything else I can add. What was Thank your you. name again? Jeff Evan. The headquarters in the United States for the Diebel Election Systems is McKinney, Texas. We took an, an advantage of the fact that they left their trash wide open for anyone to take a look at. And in fact, we found um, the complete contents of Bob Urosevich's personal paper wastebasket stash. And in it was a number of, were a number of documents that were really very important. <sighs> you know, one would think that a democracy that is transparent, you wouldn't need to go through an I spy game to try to figure out how the heck your vote's being counted. But I guess that in today's world, that's what privatization means. Some of the things we got here, Andy, are really interesting. I would, I, I, let me tell you, this one, don't look, you watch the road, I'll okay. read it to you. Okay. Okay. How did stuff get sent to Canada, get back to us, then get resent to customers as new? What? <laughs> this is a deep old um, notation. Here's one from Tippecanoe, Indiana. And they had many concerns, apparently they were withholding their payment for some reason. And uh, the touch screen units would not upload correctly on election night. How much more damage can I stand? I have to tell you, my son is grown now. I, I never thought I was going to have to spend the second half of my life fighting for my son's right to vote. But when I realized he might not have that right, then I just decided, well, by golly, you know, and not if I can help it, we're going to make sure that he keeps it. Bev's next stop was San Diego, California, where she met Jennifer Hamilton, a poll worker. Jennifer was astonished when county officials told her to take the new computers home with her until the election. And so, so you're telling me, just so I understand this right, because this is actually mind-boggling, that 1,600 people went home with voting machines that night. Yes, some of them for almost a month. And could you explain to me the careful background check they did on each person? Uh, they asked us for our name <laughs> and to sign in at training. And that's it? Yeah. No identification on No well, idea. Well, I would like to know, this is probably a written procedure, wouldn't you think? I'd like to see the written procedure that says, the procedure is, when they come in, you ask for their name, and then you give them a voting machine. <laughs> this is my dad, Jim, my mom, Charlene. With right. an S. Now, where, where did they put the, car, the machines? They put them in the back seat? Where did they put them? All right, so you drove in, you had a car full of voting machines. Uh, most of them they put in the back seat. So we're loading up the loading up the machines in the car. They got a couple of them in the trunk. They were all the machines. Were, yeah, the machines were lined up against the wall here. Now the central tabulator is sort of the one machine to rule them all. It collects all the votes, and every company, not just Diebold, has this central tabulator because, of course, the way you vote is you vote in individual precincts. They're scattered around, and there has to be one machine to pull all these threads together, add them all up and pronounce the winner. Bev was invited to New York to meet former presidential candidate Howard Dean. Bev sat me down, and in a few short seconds, I was amazed at what I could do. All right, Bev, show me how to do this. Well, 
what we have here is the central tabulator computer. Now in a voting system you have all these different voting machines at all the different polling places. Sometimes in, as in a county like mine there's a thousand polling places in one county. All those machines feed into the one machine so it can add up all the votes. So of course if you were going to do something you shouldn't to a voting machine, would it be more convenient to do it to the 4,000 machines or to just come in here to one machine and, and deal with all of them at once? What surprises people is the central tabulator is just a PC. It's like you and I use. It uses Windows. It's just a regular computer. So anybody well, who can hack into a PC can hack into the central tabulator. The GEMS program is the program that is the central tabulator program. And I'm going to put in a password here. Okay, we're in. Now, this is the official program that the county supervisor sees. Is Up this to the, that. D, the uh, DBOLD program? Yes, this is a DBOLD central tabulation program. Okay. And then go to election summary report. And it's going to whir and spin for a minute while it adds up all the votes from all the different precincts. And as we can see here, Howard Dean has 1,000 votes. And Lex Luthor has 500. So you're beating Lex Luthor and we're... Two quite, to one. Yes. And Tiger Woods, unfortunately, doesn't have any votes yet. All right. All right. Let's close this out. I was just showing you the legitimate way to go in and look at votes, which, All of right. course, you can't tamper with. Go to the Start menu, and I'm going to show you something tricky. Go to the sum of the candidates, which is that table. You see we have 800 votes here for you and 400 for Lex Luthor. Let's just flip those. We'll make that 400. And we'll give 100 votes to Tiger. Let's just see what happened here. We'll go back into GEMS the legitimate way. You're the county supervisor. You're checking on the progress of your election. And as you can see now, Howard Dean only has 500 votes. Lex Luthor has 900 and Tiger Woods has 100 votes. Mm. We just edited an election. It took us 90 seconds. By the time this child graduates from high school, her brain will have absorbed 350,000 television commercials, 100,000 alcohol ads, and a daily barrage of sex and violence. If that doesn't turn you off, then nothing will. A message from the Media Foundation.